Folks, in today's live stream, we're going to be trying to fix up this Bachman Spectrum CSX-840C. Uh, I bought this locomotive back in 2013 at a shop in Los Angeles called uh, Arnie's Trains. Uh, it was only $30, which was a pretty good price. I guess it was a, um, a later run, or an earlier run, I should say, so it wasn't as high quality. But uh, either way, I bought this thing. And uh, as far as Bachman locomotives go, it's been a relatively good engine. But uh, it has had a bit of a problem where uh, when you add more cars on, the motor's revving way faster than it should, which leads me to believe something's slipping in the drive. And uh, as of recently, it's gotten a lot worse and it started making some funny noises. So I think that it's probably just something connecting to the motor or connecting to this truck. But we'll have to open it up to see. I'll uh, take it over to the track. I'll show you all uh, kind of what it's doing. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something's clearly not right with it. Anyways, looks like we've already got 64 people in here. Uh, welcome everyone. What's wrong with it? Something's slipping in the drive. Um, I'll, uh, I'll show it rather than describing it here. Happy birthday. Well, it's not my birthday, but uh, thanks. It's somebody else's birthday? Late night treat. Yeah, well, my parents are away, so there's nobody to keep up upstairs. So I can do a bit of a later live stream, which is nice. I've been working on the layout. As uh, some of you who are on this previous live stream might remember, there was a lot of electrical issues, so I've been sorting that out. The gear might be slipping. If a gear slips, it usually you hear the teeth binding up, and that this one's not doing that. I'll show you what it's doing. Um, so you can already hear something's a little off, but at this lower speed, it's not really evident anything is wrong. But when you really put the hammer down, well, it hasn't, it's not doing it right now, but if we let it run for long enough, you'll start to see what's, what's the matter with it. And of course, it seems to be running absolutely fine. This was having major issues in the last live stream. I don't know if it's just because the uh, plastic's cold. Maybe everything's tightened up a little bit, but uh, it was having some major slippage issues. Maybe it fixed itself. I'm still opening this thing uh, either way, though. I'll see if I can stop it. I'm, I'm sure that the problem can be shown. As I was looking at this the other day, and this is what it was doing. So I'm gonna zoom this in because it seems to be the rear truck that's the problem. I'm just gonna hold the coupler. I'm not gonna apply any weight to the locomotive. If I give the engine power, you see how that wheel set is stationary? The front one is too. So I'm not adding any weight to this engine, you know, it should be able to spin. It's not, I mean, it's running, but there's something definitely not right there. I mean, this is a fairly small train right here, so. I want to uh, open this up and see if maybe something's split. I had this exact problem on an Atherin Genesis uh, Mikado steam locomotive and I was able to uh, Correct it by just adding a bit of CA to the gear. So I'm thinking this thing probably needs a similar remedy. It's obviously not as severe. I'm actually uh, surprised by how well it ran because, again, in the previous live stream, it was doing some pretty funky things. So now I should note I've never opened one of these before. So um, bear with me while I do this. SMT, do you have any repair videos for Riverossi 040 locomotives? I have a little loco that looks like it needs to be fixed. 
Well, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I actually got two of them, um, which were uh, severely rusted. So um, I plan to upload that video pretty soon. It's going to be a long one, but I will uh, show how to take those apart. So you're in luck. Anyways, I'm going to try to uh, remove the uh, screws for the fuel cell. I don't know if this is necessary to open it. I believe it is. I'll remove these two screws and see if I can get the whole chassis to pop out. Do you know what's wrong with my Golden Eagle locomotive? It won't run. Well, it could be any number of problems with those old power torques. Um, if you have a bit of a description of, of what it's doing, it might be helpful. Because, I mean, it, it might not run for any reasons, but if you have a working headlight, you know, the electrical system's working, or, you know, if it's making a squealing noise but it's not moving, it's probably the pivot gear. Like, there's any number of things, but it's kind of hard to diagnose it without actually seeing it. Oh, no, a split chassis. Yeah. And these screws were... They just torqued the bejesus out of them. I'm definitely stripping these out right now. See if I can get this one out first. Harrison, is that a Bachman? It looks like you're fixing. I notice when I take Bachman steam engines apart, they have a similar thick metal weights. Yes, it is a Bachman, and uh, it's using one of their split chassis designs, which is probably why the store was selling it so cheap. Okay, let's see if I can get this other one out. This is not really going my way here. Like, there's, there's not much grip. And that's the largest bit, which I, I thought would help. I thought maybe I was using too small a bit, but I think that that screw is really in there well. <laughs> I wonder if I have another uh, bit which maybe would fit in there a little bit better. Play a flathead. I don't find flatheads are usually the best way to get out a screw. I mean, you want to have as much contact area as possible, but I'll uh, I'll give it a try. What this really might need is a drill. It's too big. Is there a size smaller I can use on this? Hmm. It would not appear so. See if this will work. Put a drop of oil on the screw. That might help it. If a flathead's what what's needed to get this out, this might not be the right size. I have a Kato N-scale steam locomotive, and it will not run. Do you have any advice on how to fix it? Well, again, if, if like, the lights are coming on and stuff, you know it's getting electricity. If not, especially with a steam engine, I'd probably check the tender, make sure, you know, there isn't a broken wire. My money is all on you. Well, I'm glad you have that kind of belief. I'm, uh... A little unsure how to proceed here. I wasn't. Ex I've never had this problem um, with one of these locomotives before, so I'm a little bit surprised that that screw uh, is quite so stiff. Um, I might just try this again. The definition of insanity, I think, is something like doing the same thing over and over again and 
expecting different results, but let's give it one last shake here. I mean, it's already... It's already stripped so bad, I don't think I can make that much worse. Best is CRC contact cleaner. Maybe. Do you say it like Kato or Kato? I really can't tell. I keep saying it both ways and then I keep getting corrected. So uh, I, I'm not sure what the correct way is. Uh, maybe it's a tomato tomato situation. I'm, I'm not entirely sure to be honest with you. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go get my drill and we're gonna make short work of that screw because uh, I really don't feel like fiddling around with that thing. It's probably not fun. Jack Jack says, Kato. Hey, SMT, I recently got a set of five River Rossi NYC Streamline passenger cars and a River Rossi Hudson 5405. My question is, what's the best way to keep River Rossi motors in shape and last a long time? Uh, really just good maintenance. If you uh, just put a little bit of oil on those bearings, those motors will run all day long. Uh, clean out the gaps on the commutator too. That's another point. You don't want carbon building up because uh, that can cause all kinds of trouble. But um, River Aussie motors are very well made. I've It's very rare you see them fail. Anyways, let's get the old uh, Drill 500, which does have a good battery. Just need to find some crappy bit to use. I think that'll do the trick. I just tried to lubricate it and it stopped working. Well, if you put lubricant on the commutator, or on certain contacts. If it's not a conductive lubricant, that can uh, cause issues. So I probably would investigate that. Other end of basement reveal. Hey, it's been featured in a couple of videos. I just don't go over there uh, super often because it's usually kind of messy. A screw can't be stuck if it doesn't exist. Yeah, that's, that's the mechanics rule. It's a similar thing to uh, a screw can't be stuck if it's melted. I mean, uh, if I could, I would love to put a uh, propane torch on this, but uh, I don't think I'd have much locomotive left, so this is how I'll have to proceed. And it is not loving it. It's kind of awkward. I, I don't want to... I need the pressure to be back here, but I certainly do not want to place my hand here because if this bit slips, it's going to go right into it. And uh, I've already had a few bad experiences in that sort of thing, so I'll just keep chipping away at it like this. <laughs> Looks like that... Uh, didn't go half bad. Okay, um, I think I do need to maybe remove that coupler pocket there. The locomotive doesn't move, it doesn't make sound, and the light does not turn on. Okay, well, I would, I would check the uh, wiring. I would check all the contacts, check the wires. Always uh, give the wires a slight pull, because uh, sometimes a piece of solder can crack and power can't flow through it, but it appears okay, so uh, just, just go through it. Uh, that is a, a textbook electrical problem. Anyways, uh, here is the drive. I'm not... Terribly impressed by how all of this is laid out, to be honest, but uh, it is this rear truck, which is the problemed one, so let's see if we can get it to repeat the problem here. If I just add a bit of pressure. And you can see exactly what's going on. So 
Um, this drive shaft is turning, but the worm gear over here isn't moving, and I'm, I mean, I'm barely applying any weight to that wheel there. So I might try unscrewing this, dropping it out, and seeing if we can fix this. I was hoping it was just going to be slipping, but I'm starting to think a piece of plastic actually has broken here, so not so good. This design, by the way, is one of the main reasons I complain about Bachmann locomotives being poor quality. You have the entire pressure of the truck mounted through this tiny little screw. I really don't know what the designers were thinking. All the other manufacturers, you know, they have a good firm connection to the body. So if you bump or drop this truck, it's probably going to be all right. But unfortunately, with most Bachmann engines, it is not so... Okay, so this is good news. Um, the plastic is intact, but it is slipping around the drive. I mean, they added a lot of lubricant to this, so my guess would probably be some of that lubricant seeped in there and is lubricating an area which it's not supposed to. Now, there are two screws here, so if we dig into that, I might be able to uh, roughen up the metal, add a bit of CA, clean off any unwanted lubricant and then you know it might just fix this and I should probably do the uh, same to the other truck hey SMT I have an old Bachman okay the message just got retracted sure we'll see it again I have a Bachman I think it's an FT it has the strangest problem the engine runs fine but when it goes around any sharp curves the drive shaft on the motor slips out yeah, um, well, I'll, I'll actually try to show you why that can happen. It's not a super uncommon issue. It's gonna let us take that out. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to remove this bit, but it doesn't actually have to be removed. We can do all the work from here. Uh, but to answer the question about the drive shaft popping out on corners, so as I was mentioning earlier, you know, this, this is loose. That's not supposed to happen. But when these become loose, they can also move back and forth. So if yours is going around corners, you know, the, the reason there's a bit of space here is because when this goes around a corner, it needs to come forwards and backwards a bit. But if this part here slides, it opens that gap and then it allows the drive shaft to pop out. So in all likelihood, all you need to do is pull this part off a little bit and uh, add some adhesive, just as I'm going to do with this one. And I bet that problem will vanish. Yeah, <laughs> nothing to take that off. See? There's another uh, design which is not very good. Like, they only have this little bitty surface area for the plastic to grip. Like, it's no wonder these um, fail so often. What I'm going to try to do with this one is I'm going to take some pliers. I'm going to really try to, you know, score up the metal and then put some CA on it just because, you know, this is such a smooth surface. And plastic is also naturally pretty smooth. So, try to kind of change that dynamic. But, you also got to be careful because... Don't want to get any lubricants in there. I called it the worm gear broke. Well, the the worm gear itself is, is fine. It's this coupling here, which is slipping, so sort of. Harrison, I hope you had a good day. Um, have an awesome night. I've been watching the channel since 10K. Well, thanks for sticking around. That's awesome. Is this pre-recorded? No, this is this is live. This could go very wrong. We'll have to see. I'm sure some people are also going to hate seeing me. You know, it kind of takes such a vulgar, you know, tactic to fix this thing up, but you know, I want to I want to fix this and not have to ever really open it up again and I've done this before scoring up the metal. So not too worried about it. So that looks nice and nasty. 
And now I need to get some sort of some sort of a degreaser because nine times out of ten there is some unwanted oil there. And I should probably try to degrease the inside of this and then add some CA. I might add the CA to this part because I really don't want it to go on that bearing. That that's probably how this is gonna end, but I'll try to avoid it if uh, possible. See if I have some uh, rubbing alcohol or something. Harrison, you need a Dremel. I should go and order one. That probably would be helpful for uh, a lot of projects I have. I was just wondering if you posted today. I had to check my recommended you here. here. Well, I put out a post about the um, OVA or flea market uh, coming to Ottawa. Pretty excited about that. And uh, the advertising for that show is usually not that great. So I decided I'd advertise it here on the channel because last year I had a lot of people who were disappointed saying, I live in the Ottawa area, but I didn't know uh, there was a show happening. So I had an older Atherin GP9 from the 50s and it had the same issue. I discovered the worm gear coupler was cracked and spinning freely on the shaft. Yeah, either it cracks or it just wears out. Um, it's a pretty common problem. I find the Atherns are a little bit better, but uh, old Bachman and engines are just notorious for this. It's not necessarily great to be using paper towel, by the way, too. You don't really want to be using fibrous stuff because it could get caught, but I'm just going to keep an eye on it and make sure that doesn't happen. I'll try to kind of roll it up here and just uh, clean out the inside. Harrison, have you ordered an, an NR class yet? Uh, as a matter of fact, I did. It's uh, on its one well, it might have arrived actually. I don't know. I haven't unboxed it yet, but there is going to be uh, more Australian locomotives here on the channel. Okay, so I think at this point, maybe I'll let that dry for just a, a moment here, and uh, I'll see too if I have uh, an open bottle of CA. I'm going to remove the other truck and do the same thing because I think in all likelihood it's probably got the same issue or if it doesn't now, it's going to. Anybody know good places to get spare parts? I get that question pretty often, and uh, to tell you the truth, there, there aren't a lot of retailers. There are some people who uh, list spare parts on eBay, but it's pretty rare. So what I would suggest is if you've got an engine which you really want to fix up, either buy a junked version of the exact same engine or buy an engine from the same manufacturer because sometimes like with atherin engines you know a lot of the gears and stuff are cross compatible pro tip to avoid this problem buy a uh, cato engine yeah maybe although um this whole uh, split chassis thing which so many people don't like you might be surprised what cato has done with their most recent release with the uh, new um FP40 locomotives. I'm going to be doing a uh, video on that soon because I, I bought a a new Cato engine to uh, to work on and I was really shocked as to how they built it. So that one's got much better grip, but it is still slipping. So I'll do the same process.
What if your locomotive is 60 years old and has specially made wheels for it and has a motor that does not match any motor on the market? Well, I find in a lot of cases, you just need to find a similarly sized motor. Um, you know, if, it, if, it, if it's connected to a certain worm gear, that might be a problem, but uh, I've done a lot of repairs where I've replaced a, a locomotive's motor with something very different from the original. There's a seller on eBay called So Much Stuff that has a lot of parts going back years. Goes by that train place out of Oklahoma. Okay. I liked working on 80s Bachman uh, plaster track cleaner. Also, you appreciated my idea to kitbash two of them flipping the windshields. I have a downward one sloped in newer cars. I have another P32 ACDM that I'm working on, but I need some extra Atherin blue box parts. Well, it's funny you say uh, a P32 because that's the um, engine I was trying to use, the Cato engine to model. And, uh, yeah, the mo it, it uses a dual, it has a split chassis dual motor design, which is just something I wouldn't expect to see from Cato because you look at most other Cato products, like, look at this thing. You know, I got a great big motor, two nice flywheels. You know, it's all quite sturdy. So to have a split chassis design and, well, this might actually be a split chassis, but um, to, to have a split chassis and separate motors, I'm really amazed they would do something like that. Look inside here too. I don't know if they used something that was corrosive, but the oil's turning green, which is kind of weird. I had another locomotive, and, and the plastic had chewed right through, and it had this exact same color. So, yeah, I wonder if, I don't know, there's a dissimilar metal issue with these Bachmans. If you think about it, every single locomotive is technically a split chassis locomotive. Uh, not really. I mean, there's a, a lot of steam locomotives where the whole body is a single chassis, and uh, it picks up its power from the tender, and then you've got the old Bachman engines or the old... Uh, Tycho's uh, split chassis is more like this. I've seen tons where the whole body is plastic. All right, uh, I think I'll do the cleaning process on these parts now. Hopefully this thing runs uh, better than it did before. It's going to be pretty unfunny if I, I get this all back together and it's even worse than it was when I started off. Okay, now the scary part, putting the oil on. Now, here's uh, one thing you can do. So you put a bit of oil on all the parts you don't want to get glue on. And it's good because you already need to lubricate your locomotive. And then if you accidentally get oil on it or you accidentally get glue on it, the oil will prevent the glue from bonding to the uh, areas you don't want. Now, obviously, we don't want to get oil on the area where the glue needs to go. So it's all a fine balance. But I remember this one time I accidentally spilled oil into a gearbox and the whole thing seized up and I thought I was screwed but I opened it up and I was able to peel away all the glue because there was so much old oil in the gearbox that it actually uh, saved it. So I'm just gonna put a drop like that. And what I'm hoping happens is as I slide it on there, it will kind of pull the glue with it and it hopefully will not go into that bearing. glue my fingers together here. I think that worked. I think that's about where it's supposed to be. So let that dry and uh, go work on the other one now. I'm just going to do the same thing. Whoops. 
Hey, SMT, whatever happened to that Bachman Spectrum engine where one of the trucks looked like it was dipped in acid? My dad was interested to see if you ever fixed it or not. Uh, that's the locomotive I was just uh, referring to, actually, about the, um, you know, the green residue there. Uh, I never worked on it. It actually uh, still runs, but uh, no, I'll have to open that up at some point and try to uh, fix it up as well. So I'm in here, I'll give this thing a healthy serving of oil. Okay, I think that uh, it should about do it. So I'll try to kind of put this whole thing back together and then cross our fingers and hope for the best. Howdy, SMT. How much would you pay for a Bachman GS4 Southern Pacific Daylight with DCC? Uh, if it's used, maybe uh, about $150. It's in good uh, working order. I'm not a huge fan of the Bachman Daylights. Uh, I've had a lot of problems with mine, but um, they're pretty engines. So I'll give Bachman credit. I do think they did a nice job with the details on them. Hey Harrison, do you remember about three years back Nerf Cat hated the food train you made for him with the Canadian Pacific Switcher? Yeah, that was funny. Do you have a PRRS one by any chance? I don't think so. I do have uh, a fair bit of Pennsylvania Railroad equipment, like the, uh, well, T1, for example, but I don't think I have one of those. It's always good to try to see kind of what the angle is there and just line it up beforehand. I think that's the right screw. I should grab a magnet and see if I can pull that screw out. It's not so good. I don't think I got that lined up right. Let's see if that's it. I just uh, over tighten that. Yeah, okay, there we go. For anybody out there too who might be, you know, trying to follow this video as a uh, tutorial, keep in mind when you reinstall this part to get it under that lip there, you'll feel it kind of click in place. What a crap design. I couldn't agree more, Norm. Um, 
I'm, uh, I'm not impressed. Uh, there's some people out there and, and they say like, I'm a little bit too hard on Bachman and, uh, you know, I understand they're, they're a budget manufacturer, but my problem with them is that, you know, they've over the last few years raised their prices like crazy. And this is what's inside. Like they make these pretty locomotives. They've, you know, got decent detail. They look nice. So, you know, if you'd never open them up, they, they, they seem like fine engines, but, um, you know, there's a reason why these, I find have more mechanical problems than most of the other manufacturers products. This one's being a little more difficult to uh, thread through here. Screws are microscopic on these Bachmans. Yeah, I really, I really don't understand why they wouldn't make them a little bit bigger, because something like this, especially when it's threaded into plastic, I just lost it, it seems like something that would strip out quite easily. And, it, and again, it bears the weight of the entire uh, truck. Oh, I think that that might have just gone into place. So now I need to go look on the ground for that screw. I don't think it went too far. There we are. Bachman forgot the KISS method. Keep it smooth and simple. Absolutely. That's <laughs> what uh, Atherm was good at. He just came up with, you know, put some quality parts together. Don't uh, overcomplicate it. You make engines which will run for like uh, 50 years with hardly any maintenance. Make sure that's all uh, moving around nicely. So, I think that that's good. Um, before I go throwing the shell back on it, I'm going to take it over to the track just to make sure I actually did everything right because uh, this is looking decent, but, you know, I just want to be sure. Harrison, it's my birthday tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday, uh, Cooper. Okay, let's see if all that effort has paid off here. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, before, as you saw when I was holding this, those wheels are not spinning. Now, even if I put some weight on it, you hear how that strain is going to the motor? That means that those drive shafts are on there real, real good, and um, once that glue fully sets, I don't think that they're going to go anywhere again. So I think at this point, throw the shell back on it and uh, actually run this thing with some cars. It's really good to see. I, I don't know. For some reason, I was expecting there to be some weird problem. Of course, getting the shell back on is gonna be interesting because in the beginning of the stream I went and drilled out the screw so now I need to find something to replace that So here's another thing I don't understand. Like they put one post here and one post here. Why not add another here and here? Like they could have made it twice as strong.
Okay, did I forget to put some parts back in here? I think these two are for the couplers. I thought that that was for the body, but... It's not good if you end up with more parts than you started with. I don't know. <laughs> for everyone in the comments, do you remember what this was part of? Don't you hate it when that happens? <laughs> yeah, it's free parts. I mean, it did run without it, so uh, you made it a more efficient design. Yeah, you know what? Let's just put it back together as it is. Because if it's going to run fine without those extra screws, it probably didn't need to be there in the beginning. For the tank cover, the screws on each side. Oh yeah, okay, you're right. Which means that I've actually gone and lost one, but at least that explains where, where it came from. Now I need to go digging through my spare parts and see you you know, if I can find a self-tapper or something that will replace the original. I kind of got my eyes on this one here. The nice thing about plastic is that it's so much more forgiving than metal when you need to uh, do a dodgy repair like this. Wow, that thread's in there perfectly. Like, it's, it's like this was meant to be. Let's throw that back on there. Coupler screw. Both the coupler screws are here. Okay, that's looking all right. Let's see if I can find that one last screw just to hold down the fuel cell. I mean, it's just a cosmetic part, but I prefer to keep it all together. Yeah, I'm not seeing it on the floor. Since this is an external screw, I'm just gonna wait. I'm sure it will turn up, and when I find it, I'll just throw it back in there, because, uh, you know, it's not like it has to be disassembled to uh, put it back in. Kids ask about commutators. I worked on fixing real traction motors. Ooh. Okay, I figured out why I'm missing a screw. I didn't actually lose a screw. The, the problem is that this screw is actually for the coupler pocket. This was already missing when I got in here, which means that both of these screws are actually supposed to go here. So hopefully they're the same size and adding that didn't just mess up the threads. Here are some works at Hershey's. I, uh, no, I don't, but, uh, that would be cool. I mean, when they come back to Smith, well, I mean, they're supposed to come back to Smith Falls. I shouldn't say that because it hasn't officially reopened, but, uh, I, I am kind of tempted. Hey, SMT, I haven't been in one of your lives in a while. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing just fine. How have you been?
you think 90 Canadian is worth it for seven locomotives, but only three run? Picks up power through, though, good projects. Sounds a little bit high to me. I mean, uh, when I'm buying project locomotives, I try to pay between 5 and $10 a unit Canadian. Um, I mean, uh, broken engines are not usually worth a crazy amount. If, if they're old Atherns or something that actually have value in parts, they, you can go a little higher than that, but generally uh, I use the $10 or less rule. Ah, oh, they really don't like making this stuff easy. Bachman is the iPhone of the model train world. More like BMW slash Land Rover. Well, I mean, iPhones are overpriced, but at least they're well made. I, I can't really say the same for their for Bachman products. Okay, I think that that is uh, not too bad. Walters is way better. I tend to agree. I've got some really uh, old Walters. Well, I've got a, just like my old Via Rail Walters trainline engine. And as a kid, I ran the crap out of that thing. It still runs just as good. I've hardly maintained it. I have had a couple complaints from some people saying they've uh, had circuit boards burn out, but that's about it. I script the coupler height? Why is it doing that? Yeah, I think it's a little too loose. What are your thoughts on Bowser? Uh, the old Bowser products are okay. I haven't worked with a crazy amount of them. Uh, as for modern Bowser, I think they're decent. Again, haven't worked on a crazy amount, but I don't hear too many bad things in the community about them. Let's see that. Fixed it. Yeah, that looks about right. <laughs> it's a really good locomotive. Oh, for sure. What are your... Do you have a model of Crazy 8s? Uh, no, I've been on the look for one, but uh, those things get snapped up on eBay uh, for quite a premium dollar. She's a runner. I'm gonna figure out why it derailed. Did I place it on the track incorrectly or did I actually mess something up trying to fix it?
Well, made it through that corner fine. Let's see if it derails again. Squeaky girl. It's not the locomotive, that's one of the cars. Yeah, okay. Seems to be working. Let's just run it at wide open throttle for a moment. You can definitely see in this corner it's not slowing down as much. <laughs> uh, it didn't sound so good for the gearbox, but I, I think I'll call that one uh, a success. Maybe we should dig into uh, another engine which needs to be serviced. How often do you clean your tracks? Not often enough. Uh, maybe once a month. How many feeder wires do you have to your track? Uh... I kind of a few the the thing is though like the feeders I have like to get power from you know the section of track to the other you can see there are a couple of feeder wires that pick up power from these rails and transfer them over here so uh, it's not like I actually have a, a bus line running under here um, the inner circuit actually does have uh, feeder wires which are connected to uh, a wire which links up over there I was actually uh, doing some upgrades. I'll, I'll probably mention this in a future live stream because I don't know if everyone will see this in the replay, but uh, I redid the electrical system on the layout today. So in the previous live stream, I was having a lot of problems. And uh, what I discovered is that when I had hooked up those feeder wires over there, I had only tied them around the wires to the power pack. So at some point during that live stream, my leg must have gone under the table and I kicked the wires loose. So what I did today was I, um, well, first of all, I bought two new switches because the old ones were starting to have problems. But, yeah, much neater wiring. And then uh, I wired up. We got power coming in from this controller to here, the DCC controller to here, and then the output, one line goes directly to the track. The second line feeds into this. And then the other line connects up to uh, this controller right here. So what this means is uh, from now on, what I can do, like let's say I want to run both lines off the same controller. Switch that. You see it just runs off here. But if I switch this, then it runs off that controller. Or if I switch it back and then switch that, runs off DCC. So it's been completely rewired, so should help, but yeah, I probably should add another bus wire. SMT, do you have a microphone? Cause your audio is perfect, but mine is crap. Uh, I'm, for these live streams, I'm just using the uh, iPhone's microphone, but uh, for my videos, I have a, I think it's called a Deity mic. Can't remember what it's called. Oh, actually, it's right over here. I'll show you. Yeah, this is the microphone I use, and... Uh, it's a pretty good unit. I have had some problems uh, with it being actually a little bit too loud, but it gets the job done. Have you heard of anyone using a small Bluetooth speaker in a boxcar and a cell phone app for sounds? Uh, yeah, I, I think some people have done that. I think they sell uh, what's called an ice cube uh, speaker which is just a tiny speaker. You can throw that in a box car and then wire in some sound. 
Can you make future videos explaining your DC DCC track system? It'd be great building a layout in the spring. It's funny you say that. Uh, I, I did a video about that exact topic years ago. It wasn't very well done, so I think I'm going to make a, uh, a newer rendition. But uh, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. It's, it's not hard to wire up both controllers. I'm just looking through here. I'm not sure. I don't want to take on any uh, crazy projects tonight, but uh, I'm just trying to think of another engine which might need some basic maintenance. How many trains did your dad have before he took over the hobby? He had five locomotives and probably about 30 cars, as well as some buildings and track. I didn't get the buildings and track until much later, though, because we were under the belief that all the buildings had been thrown away. And then uh, when my grandmother was moving, uh, we opened up this box and it was full of all these buildings. So, um, like, this is one of his old buildings. Uh, that house right there is one of them. These two are that house right up there. So a lot of his original layout uh, lives on here. When did you get the Centennial? I got it in 20, either 2009 or 2010. I can't remember, but I was, I was pretty young at the time and I wanted one desperately and uh, managed to win uh, one in an auction over eBay. I think almost every model railroader has too many projects. Yeah, yeah, no, nobody's workbench is ever clean. If somebody's workbench is too clean, it's probably a sign that there's not too many things on the go. I have a project in the works. It's a River Aussie 2882Y6B. I believe it needs a new motor, but I can't find anything that would fit. Uh, go on eBay. There's somebody who sells um, replacement lo uh, motors for River Rossies, and they're five poles, so they should perform uh, better than the originals. Are your videos pre-finished or on a schedule for posting? Do you make videos and then post them when you're done making them? Um, I, I try to maintain once a week in terms of uploads, but uh, there, there's no real set schedule. It's usually like at the beginning of the week I begin production on a new video. And uh, the filming, depending on the project, takes about one or two days. And then there's about another full day of editing on top of that. Any tips for cork ballasting? Uh, sometimes the cork... You know, because it comes with two attached strips, is a bit rough on the edges, so sanding it down, like peeling away this stuff can really help. Other than that, really just typical uh, ballasting techniques. Harrison, can you speak French? Gatineau's in Quebec, so I don't know. Uh, not really. I, I learned some French uh, while I was working at a restaurant, which uh, certainly helped because a lot of the people there uh, couldn't speak much English. So that was really good. But uh, I, I went to school uh, in Ontario and uh, French is only an elective there. So unfortunately, I never really learned the language, which is uh, unfortunate because it's quite important in Quebec. And uh, a lot of stuff which has been happening, uh, they're making it harder to actually speak for services in English, so something I need to learn. What's your track? It's uh, mostly Atlas Code 100, but some of my switches are made by Pico. As I tried to organize these, these, I believe some of the top ones are sh sh supposed to be easier to work on. I don't remember. I wonder 
what's the matter with this. I thought of using waterproof sandpaper under the turnouts when ballasting track, otherwise I use the cinder core and red black ballast. Good day, SMT. Any tips for painting and finishing a nailed cork to plywood layout? I am in Australia and I haven't seen many tips on how to do it. Well, most of the times, like parts of this layout are, are just done with plywood and I just throw uh, green paint over that and then I lay uh, the turf directly on top of that and let it sink into the paint. I find it works pretty well. Do you have a challenger that doesn't work? I do. Let's see what's going on with this first. See if I can fix two Bachmans in one night. Hmm. Absolutely nothing. So, see if we can tackle that. But uh, yeah, as for the challenger, I think it's up here. Certainly in need of a little bit of detail, but it's not the worst project I've taken on. Harrison, can you speak burger, burger, freedom language? What's that supposed to be? What was the hardest locomotive to repair? About... A year ago, there, there was an RS3. That was quite a nightmare to work on. I'm trying to think. There, there have been a few. That Bachman uh, Daylight was certainly no treat. So, it wasn't showing. The light wasn't working and the motor wasn't humming, so that kind of leads me to believe that What's probably wrong is that one of the connections somewhere in here is not doing its job. Let's give the wires a little tug. Everything looks okay, so... I'll just dig right into this truck here. Hmm. Those look fine too. That's interesting. Oh no, a pan yeah, oh no is right. When you see a pancake motor. like smoking now I'm really confused As both these wires look connected properly and that's soldered on there so there may be a linkage inside the wire that's broken See if maybe it can. Hmm. Wonder if those wheels are just so dirty that power can't 
get to them. Ground issue. I think it's just a case of, yeah, I mean, those are pretty bad. Say what you will about them, but they rarely completely give up the ghost. They can usually be fixed unless in extreme circumstances. Well, I mean, that's that's true, but the same could be said with just about any other manufacturer. I think the most common locomotives for catastrophic failure I've seen are the lifelike tea kettle, the Bachman split chassis uh, steam locomotives, and uh, power torque motors. You need a Dremel with a polishing. Yeah, that would be helpful. I should just pop on Amazon tonight and uh, order one up. Does SMT have a multimeter? Yeah, I do. It's one of these things that everybody's been telling me to get for eons. It has been helpful. I have a tea kettle and the thing was junk. I threw in a modeled Power 040 and got the thing running great. The original gears, gears were dreadful. Yeah, like, I, I, it's very rare I've actually heard about one working. Almost uh, everybody I know who owns one said, yeah, gears stripped out years ago. So there was clearly a design flaw with those, which is funny because, um, well, gee, that's not so good. Uh, a lot of people I find really like hate on Lifelike for being a junk manufacturer, and you know I, I tend to agree they weren't making the greatest products out there. But compared to um, Bachman of the same time and Tyco of the same time, I don't find you see catastrophic failure quite as much. So that right there is not so good. I wonder if I can just solder that contact back on there. I'm already putting in way more effort than this thing is worth, but what the heck. Proto 2000 engines were good. They weren't bad. I mean, they, they clearly ripped off Ather, and the whole drive system looks identical. In fact, uh, the parts apparently are cross-compatible. Um, which would be a good thing. The only problem I've seen with a lot of them is that the gears, uh, which are on the trucks, they tend to split, and then when they do, they the wheels touch each other, and then that causes a short circuit. So I've seen that failure point. But other than that, they, they had good motors and whatnot. Okay, I think what I need... <laughs> now I've pulled out the wire. Yeah, probably be worth just going through my spare parts bin and finding a spare set of contacts. I, I, I'm sure I have some. Thoughts on Bachman Spectrum? Their later stuff is okay, um, but I mean, like, the Bachman Spectrum I just worked on, it basically is all the same problems that any other Bachman engine has, so I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend them. I'm very tempted to do a super ratchet repair with this. 
just polish up that metal there do a bit of polishing here throw a bit of solder on there and and, and see maybe no one will notice Well, there's your problem, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> just dig out everyone's favorite soldering iron. I was laughing because uh, weeks ago, I something arrived at the P.O. box from Amazon, and I, I thought that that was a little bit weird because usually when I order stuff from Amazon, I just have it, you know, delivered to my house. But um, I got it home, and it was addressed to me, but I realized it wasn't something I had ordered. So I open it up, and inside is a message from Amazon, you know, that you can, I guess, send with a gift. And it was from some some viewer of the channel. I I I didn't recognize the name, but um, the note said like, "Here's a soldering iron. It will be better than that piece of junk you're always working with." <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then there was a a budget soldering iron included. So it's nice of somebody to send one in. But uh, I just thought that that was kind of funny. Most. Uh, a passive-aggressive gift I think I've ever received. The problem with Bachman is the branding on the bottom. They just got fed up with the trusty soldering gun. I mean, I kind of get it. Like, this is not a practical soldering iron. You know, most modelers use something a lot more precise. But I like it. It heats up instantly, gets to a really high temperature, so it, the solder will uh, flood properly. Um, I, I have regular soldering irons. I just don't find they uh, fit my needs very well. Don't burn yourself with a soldering gun. I speak from experience. Oh, I've been there a million times. This might be the next example. I think what I'm going to try to do is tin both pieces with a bit of solder first, see if I can get that to flood, because that's definitely going to make connecting those parts a lot easier. Um, I might burn some holes in my table here, but I think it'll be worth it. And uh, try to get rid of that dust so I'm not breathing in aluminum oxide or whatever that stuff contains. Okay, not a bad start. Just trying to see where I actually put down that flex. I think that might be the wrong side. Where do you get most of your trains? Uh, uh, probably eBay, although I buy a lot of stuff from train stores too.
Man, I really wish I hadn't just done that. I'm gonna be looking down on the floor all night long for that one little piece of metal. Let's see if, uh, I don't know if it still has it, but yeah, okay. So the app has a, a flashlight feature, so maybe just by shining this on the floor, the metal will reflect back and I'll be able to find it, but that one silly move on my part is now gonna equal probably 20 minutes of digging around on the floor. Yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna go try to find another brush. Like, this is just, it's probably not gonna last that long anyways, you know? see what's in the old uh, the spare parts. I mean, that right there might be adequate. Worse than losing a vital screw on a carpet. Yeah. See, these are the sorts of bits that get condensed in the videos. Like whenever I go looking through my spare parts bin, it only takes like 30 seconds in a video to find the part, but that's because in reality, the original video is like, you know, 10 minutes of me just digging around through all sorts of bits and pieces. I know this would probably work. I just don't know if I want to sacrifice this part. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just let's just take it. It's because the rest of this. Yeah, I don't know. Because the rest of this drive is mostly intact. Like it, it wouldn't be hard to turn this back into a working locomotive. So I don't know if I want to steal parts off it. I don't know. I think I saw it by the white wire. Do magnets work on copper or brass? I don't think so. It's an easy way to uh, test that theory. Nothing. It couldn't have gone that far. At least it can't roll. That's that's always the main thing. I'll pull away all these wires. Oh, here it is. Serenity. Do dip it in the flux. I 
I think I'll just try to solder it right on there. It's definitely a cold, uh, <laughs> a cold joint there, but yeah, I'm just gonna let that ride. I'll try to throw some other solder on here so we can try to get that wire back into place and maybe this thing will run. I've broken the wire off that. No wonder this locomotive didn't run. Like, the solder is just in terrible shape. Let's remelt that. Magnets are only attracted to iron and regular steel. Yeah, and they're also uh, attracted to Chinesium stainless steel. So it seems like my little modification has added a little bit of a problem there, but the thing is the, the truck will actually, you know, hold this piece of plastic in place, so it can't really back out. So I think I'll just throw the wheels back in there, uh, solder that one wire back on there, and uh, see if we can call it a day with this thing. Chinesium stainless steel. Yes, nothing but the finest. I think that they probably used these exact lamps to make the new Cybertruck. Well, the nice thing is both sides are already kind of uh, tinned with solder, so I, I think this is going to be really easy to get back on there. Oh, it's mint. Do you have something to clean the tip of your soldering gun with? The experts are gonna love this. You get it uh, nice and hot, and then uh, you just scrape off all the little bits of solder and stuff, and like, it does a great job. Just look at that. What a beauty. And there you go, and you don't have to worry about it. 
No, I'm joking. I do sometimes bring a sponge down here and clean that thing off properly, but there, there's always a, a ratchet way to get everything done. Check it before you put the shell back on. I believe in this locomotive. I think that it's going to start. Let's see if I uh, eat my words or not. <laughs> of course. Oh. Whoops. So I do think this engine didn't run before, but it seems that I had forgot to put my power pack back on. So uh, maybe that's why it wasn't doing anything whatsoever, but it does work. Gearbox sounds like crap, but it's doing it. Well, it doesn't have a coupler, but let's see if it's strong enough to push these cars. I'd call that a win. Yeah, I mean, it's it's doing it. Just gotta love these junky engines. I bet this one has, uh, it can even creep. Uh-oh, I think I stalled it. It looked like it was doing a bit of creeping there for a second here. Let's see. It runs better than most for its age. It's, it's not like that bad, really. It's like laziest work I've ever done on a locomotive. And uh, I mean, I wouldn't call it good, but it definitely does run. This would be a fun uh, smash up derby locomotive. Well. Another one lives. See you day. I love how the switcher is running too. Yeah. Bachman with no split gears is a win. Yeah, they're they're rare. This one's definitely at least got one bad gear, but uh, it's not stopping it. You think you'll ever do eBay videos again? Yeah, I don't see why not. Harrison is going to be called in for inv investigation by the railroad for excessive, excessive speed while shunting. Yeah, no doubt. 
I'm kind of tempted to crack another one of these open, but I, I feel like I'm really testing my luck. Still quieter than the squeaky girl, yeah. Let's see if I can find like another Kadar or something to work on. go through this and organize what barely runs and what actually does run and there are things in here like this locomotive I worked on where I just need to find a home for it on the shelf and I just threw it back on here that really shouldn't be there I think that one runs so I'm not too worried about that the Cybertruck almost looks like a 1988 Saab 900 Aero. Had a legitimate child with a 2011 Honda Ridgeline. Not an insult to Saab or Honda. Yeah, it's not the best looking vehicle in my opinion. My uh, parents are out in Miami right now. Apparently they uh, saw one today, which is funny. I didn't even think that those were uh, being sold yet, but uh, apparently they've been out on the road. Let's see if there's like a little low 4 -oh. This was something a subscriber actually sent in for me to fix, so maybe we'll see if we can get that one running. It's kind of an odd engine, honestly. Uh, working light. Nothing from the motor. Whoops. Still live. I kind of lost my uh, tripod, so I've been having to work with this. Hope that didn't... I think it's still going. I don't know. It's still live. Okay, that's good. It The, the, the phone exited out of the YouTube app, and I was sure that was going to do it in. I'm going to have to go uh, out to Best Buy tomorrow or something and find a new tripod. Now, I've never taken one of these apart before, but I'm going to take an educated guess and assume that this front screw is probably what uh, holds the whole thing together. So I think the first thing to see is whether or not both the wires going to the motor are good, and that one... See, to me, this looks like it's supposed to go in there. Is that what bricked this thing? <laughs> I kind of feel like this thing is going to fire right up. I'm not a huge fan of Honda, but after work, after years of working on cars, I give credit where credit is due. Show me a pre-2010 Honda manual, four-cylinder unmodified. I'll show you a million-mile car. Yeah, they are tough. Same with the Toyotas. Okay, so motor is working now, but apparently the gearbox is also completely messed up, so uh, who knows what's going on there. I 
It's really too bad. I, I was hoping that that was going to be the only problem. Stripped or mis... I'm hoping it's a misaligned gear. I kind of feel like it's probably something that's stripped out, but... So I'll judge that once we get down there. I mean, the motor's completely loose. That might... Yeah. It doesn't look like a well-made engine. I mean, that's for sure. Look at this tape. It's just melted. Uh, not much holding it all together. Why is that the way it is? Is something broken? Okay, that that's not good. So, I don't know how well the camera's picking that up, but to me, that looks like totally stripped gear. Or not a stripped gear, a split gear. But it's hanging on. I'm just wondering why... There's nothing holding this motor in place. Yeah. I wonder if somebody already opened this up before me. Yeah, I think somebody opened this up because it sort of looks like there's supposed to be a screw there, which threads into this, and then I believe this weight is supposed to push down and, and kind of hold this motor in place. So what probably happened was that gear cracked, it started acting up, and then somebody came in here, they forgot to put that screw back in place, and then that messed the rest of this up. Uh, 302,000 miles on my 1995 Suburban, but that might be the end for it. It's quite the run, though. I mean, I don't know how much that would be in kilometers, like... 400,000? Okay, this might be worse than I thought. What is wrong when a Tyco runs but it squeals? Uh, usually means it needs oil. Um, the plate over the motor has a little bearing, and, and you can oil that, but add a very, very uh, small amount, because if that oil wicks onto the commutator, it will start to burn, and it will actually wreck the motor. Uh, but yeah, I find usually if you just uh, oil all the different gears usually that will stop a squealing problem i think i'll try to pry this apart i don't know if i'm going to be able to get this engine running tonight but it might be savable Like what's odd about it though is that it it has a solid axle and then they decided to wrap all these nylon parts around it. So if you want to get in there, I think you have to separate the wheels themselves from the axle. And they're on there pretty tight. Okay, maybe not that tight. I should note that the uh, subscriber of this locomotive said, you know, the engine's junk, so if I trash it, it's not the end of the world. And uh, I, I will put in effort in trying to get this thing going, but 
I don't love it. Like that might be a pretty big problem there. A little bit of degreaser though, you know, might work. I think I'll uh, set that one aside for this evening though, cause that's gonna be a big project. I have two pre-95 Chevys. If it's leaking oil, it has oil. Worry when the check engine light goes out. Yeah, yeah, I like that saying. If there's no oil under it, there's no oil in it. I'm, I'm certainly, like, no expert on cars or anything too but it seems to be the most like common cause of catastrophic failure with just about any metal part is like lack of oil um you know it's amazing how many people don't check the oil level on their vehicle and have problems and uh there was actually this one time my uh, sister's 2012 sierra we were driving around and uh we got an oil, low oil warning and the oil pressure was going all over the place so something was wrong and then when we stopped there was like a puddle of oil under it. So I was like, okay, that's not good. So, so something had gone wrong and oil was actually spraying out of it. So we limped it to a gas station. They didn't have the correct one. They had one oil, which was too thin and one oil, which was too thick. So I was just like, oh, I'll just buy both and mix them in. And uh, the oil pressure went right back up and we were actually able to uh, get it to a mechanic just fine. But, um, you know, it's lucky that we put some oil in it because I'm sure that catastrophic failure was probably on the way. Just looking through here. I feel like there's got to be some other engine which might be fairly easy to dig into. Try the Polish engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last, last train of the night here. Let's see. I think this thing was a runner. It's missing its weight, so that might have a bit of an effect. Yeah, it doesn't seem so inclined to go. Let's have a look. I had one come into the shop once the person drove down the highway and it locked up. Let me tell you, you've had better luck finding water in the Sahara than oil in that motor. Oh boy. Me and my dad have recently started our very first HO scale train layout. Sorry if I sent this message already. Took the axles from a cattle locomotive. What should I use to clean the axles? Um, you can use uh, water and dish soap. Just make sure to clear it off. Uh, other than that, usually I just use rubbing alcohol. Looks like a power torque. It's, I've, I've, I've worked on one of these before. It was years ago. Um, some sort of weird Soviet design. And... 
this is so strange. It, it picks up power from both trucks, but they decided to run metal through the side, I guess to kind of act as part of the chassis because the plastic was so thin. Anyway, I'll try to see if I can get this one running just a little bit better. Now, this is not a quality engine by any means, that's for sure. I mean, that right there might be a problem. I wonder if that would have fixed it, because without that being connected there, it wouldn't have great pickup. I'll try it again. People are taught to drive but not check. So my driver's ed classes before sitting down, they taught you how to check fluids, but some modern cars make that hard. Well, it's ridiculous. The new BMWs don't even have a dipstick. They don't have a dipstick. They have a piece of software, so if you want to check the oil, it, 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 it somehow scans the fluid. I have no idea how, but I don't know if I'd really trust that, because it's like, what if there's a faulty sensor? Uh-oh. Right, there goes the $10,000 engine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's running way better. Let's see if it can push these cars. Yeah, it's not having it. it. Needs weights. It's probably the main problem. Let's see if we can, you know, yoke some sort of a piece of lead to it, maybe. I love the new part of the layout. It looks so much neater and tidier than what you had before. I love how it connects to the mountain layout. I'm very happy with it. I think it's one of the best uh, upgrades to the layout. And with the new electrical work and uh, upgrades being done to the basement, this, you know, I, I think it's all uh, coming a long way. That kind of looks perfect. Yeah, not so. That's no good. I thought I had a like a, a box of weights somewhere down here. I think this is actually part of this locomotive. Yeah, okay, good. So now we just need to find some sort of a, like a piece of lead or something to drop in there, and I, I think this thing is gonna be good. Dodge Chrysler do it too. You can only get the dipstick if you work for the dealer, or check it if you have uh, 10k USD to drop for the scanner. It's like they don't want self-sufficiency anymore. Touch that tinfoil hat. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like most things are meant because they don't want uh, people to dig into things. For that, farmers apparently are learning how to use advanced software just so that they can work on their tractors. Like, to me, that just seems insane. Huck loose some nuts in it. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't have to be nice. Like, I think this is a junk motor. Spare parts motor, so... Yeah, I think I'll just put that in there. It's probably enough weight. Let's 
find some other pieces of garbage just to throw in there. stuff that's gonna get thrown in the recycling anyway this is not good work and I'm completely aware of that but I don't want to sink a lot of money into something like this I like my cars and tractors less intelligent than me. Anyone else with me? Oh, I'm totally for that kind of stuff. There's this channel I used to watch, and I used to find uh, it's so funny because whenever he'd have something um, without a computer, he'd call it stupid. So, like, he had a battery charger, and he's like, here's my smart battery charger, and here's my stupid battery charger. Guess which one I like more? <laughs> I wonder how well this is going to fit. Okay, for some reason they decided to make the clips different sizes on both sides. So I don't know why they did that, but... I'll just try to get that in there anyway. I think all the garbage is blocking this thing from going in. Okay, well, maybe that will be enough to get this thing running nicely. The new smart ones will not charge a completely dead battery. Guess how I know? I've had that same problem. I had a uh, marine battery and it wouldn't take a charge because the voltage was so low that uh, the smart charger assumed that it was a defective unit. So what I did was I just hooked it up to uh, a car and just boosted it that way and then I was able to boost it with the smart charger which is good Something doesn't feel quite right about this truck. It's hardly pivoting. Mm. I think that freed it up. Will you make a video of unboxing the NR? Uh, probably so. I don't know if it will be part of its own video, but um, I, I've got quite a few things I've ordered from Australia, so I think I'm going to unbox them all as one video. Backwoods spare parts engineering win. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I think it's getting there. I 
So the weight definitely helped. However, I think that uh, something's not quite right with this truck. So it certainly doesn't feel like it's pivoting the right way. Or is it this one? That's the problem. Yeah, it's this one. That's the, the issue. Oh, what's going on? Okay, that's why. Look, look at this contact system. You just got this one little bitty strip of metal on each side, and it's supposed to make contact with that. Like, no wonder this thing runs like junk. I don't know what this is for. I wonder if this thing's important. Okay, I think I see what is going on. It's possible when I put this back in place, I didn't line this up. I think what this plastic part is supposed to do is it's supposed to sit between these two pieces of metal and make sure these remain in good contact with it. it still seems like a bad idea to me, but... I'll try to improve it. Contacts there look pretty clean. Mm, these, these wheels could probably use a little bit of love. Not gonna go uh, too crazy with the wheel cleaning, but. Let's give it a quick uh, shine there, see if that will improve it. Slightly random question, but how did subscribers and fans of the channel originally decide to start sending parcels? Um, I don't know. I, I opened the P.O. box uh, just so I could start to do repairs for people and so on. And if people wanted to send in letters and stuff. And then uh, David Z to G Scale, he was the first person. He sent in this box of things and then after that a bunch of people just kind of followed suit and it wasn't like it kind of just happened organically it wasn't like a something i'd talked about so i just kind of continued after that It's a P.O. box, really expensive. It's uh, two hundred dollars a year. It's not, it's not cheap, but month month by month, it's not horrible. It's probably a little bit cheaper in the states though, because I don't know. Here in Canada, things tend to be a little more expensive. Okay, I got that plastic retainer, or whatever it is, in place. So. It seems to be turning a little bit better. I'll throw some oil even in there just to really see if this thing can be improved. Okay. That, uh, that should have a traction tire. That's probably not helping it. SMT, I sent a box of locomotives. You could unbox it now. I'd be willing, although I don't know which box they'd be in, and uh, I don't know. I, I don't do a whole lot of live unboxings because there was this one time somebody sent something to me and they told me to unbox it live, and then it turned out their address was like on the paper or whatever.
That might work. It's about right. Where's my lighter at? Not half bad, just like you know. This is really weird. Like, this set of wheels is held in by the truck itself, and then the middle set of wheels is held in by the cover. That's about all she wrote. Let's see if that made any difference performance-wise. Chappy and calm for a moment reminds me of streams before you hit 20,000 subscribers. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, this one's for all the marbles. I think I messed something up. Fuel tank. I don't think it's a fuel cell. I My guess is that I probably put this wheel set in backwards and it's a helix gear. So the worm gear isn't making correct contact, and I also didn't put in that contact right apparently, so. Made all kinds of mistakes. Yep, that's a helix gear. It doesn't look like a very healthy one either. Is that stripped out or greasy? I can't tell. So yeah, I don't want to lift this too high because somebody's Put some sort of adhesive on the front because presumably the clip is broken. I'll try to uh, test it on the bench here.
Okay, why isn't why is it not starting now? The power. This thing is so junky. But I think I did get that wheel in right this time. The wipers weren't on. Oh yeah, maybe I forgot that again. Yeah, you're right. Let's see if I can get that one too. Looks like I've unfortunately lost another screw. Need one of those like uh, magnetic rollers. I could just kind of roll it over and s see if I can just lift it off the ground. It couldn't have gone that far though. I mean, it's it's a screw. It can't. It's not like it can roll. Sounded to me like it fell to the right. And who knows? I'm kind of tempted just to throw a self tapper in this one. Shake the train, see if you dropped it inside the body. It's, I don't think it's in there. I mean, I, I like, I, I heard it hit the ground. I mean, it does sound like there's loose stuff in there, but I think that's just because I threw things in the weight. I wonder where this screw came from. I think it was from that engine. It was, it was a larger screw too. I, I don't feel like this one's going to be that hard to find. I really should replace this floor so it doesn't have as much stuff to blend in with. Bingo. I think this will work. 
I looked for one for two hours one day. The train rolled over and I heard it rattle around. You'll find it. I kept the flashlight and rolled it across the floor. It makes it easier to see the shadow. That's a good trick. See if this thing will do uh, at least a lap. Well, it's not great, but it did work. Can you do a repair on a River Assey Black can motor? Uh, yeah, well, that's going to be part of the uh, 040 video. Run it in the other direction. Yeah, I kind of doubt it would be any better, but we'll see here. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be having as many electrical problems in this direction, but the traction's worse, which is weird. Let's see if it will go back the other way any better. I think it's starting to smooth out a little bit. Also try putting a magnetic strip on the edge of a workbench. That's a terrific idea. SMT, I think that iconic replicas made model buses in every scale. Do they have Via buses in Canada? I think Via Rail does have buses, yeah. Anyways, it's almost uh, 2 a.m. here, so I think I should probably finish off the live stream, but I'm pretty happy, you know. I feel like that first repair went uh, relatively well. We managed to get that second engine running. Uh, steam engine's kind of a dud, I don't know how uh, that's gonna get repaired, but I'll try to figure out something. But uh, at least we got this unit running a little bit better. I think I'll call it a night. Thanks for uh, stopping by everyone. Actually, I'll read this last comment. It pulls one way, pushes the other way. So the bad traction wheel, that's why it works better in one way, not the other. Interesting. Anyways, uh, have a great night, everyone.